Good morning to you watching me now. This is Libuzi with Spanish Made Simple. Today we're going to talk about two basic verbs in Spanish. They are ser and estar. If you're watching us for the first time, please go back and watch the first lesson. Since our class is progressive, the first lesson helps you understand the second lesson a lot better. After watching the first one, if you still like what we're doing, please subscribe share, like, give us a comment. Those two verbs are so important in Spanish that it is impossible to spend one minute speaking Spanish without using one of those. That's how important they are. I'm going to teach you exactly how to use those verbs properly. Unlike English, we only have one, but in Spanish, we have two for that to be in English. So you have to know which one to use. But to use a verb, you need to know how to conjugate that verb because it's not going to be in the very basic form. Okay, it will change for every single person upon how you place in front of it. But no need to worry. I'm going to teach you a very good method that will help you conjugate any kind of verb in Spanish without any headache. Okay. To conjugate any verb, you need to know what is called personal pronouns because you need to place it in front of it. Unlike English, Spanish is not mandatory. You can, you may not, you may use it or you may not use it. It's up to you, but you have to know them. The first one is yo for I. Tu, you. El, he. We have ella, she. Then it doesn't exist in Spanish, unfortunately. In Spanish, you have to be either male or female, no neutral. Nosotros, we. Vosotros, you. Ellos, they. El is used for anything. Ella is used for anything. It doesn't matter whether it is a person, animal, or a or thing. As long as it is like feminine, we use a we use ella. As long as it is masculine, we use el. That's it. Let's conjugate now. We have the verb ser. Ser is used as auxiliary verb, but also as independent. Let's conjugate. Yo soy. I am. Tu eres. You are. Él, ella, es. He, she, is. Even it is too. Nosotros somos. We are. Vosotros sois. You are. Ellos son. They are. Be careful. In Latin America, they don't say vosotros sois. They just delete that. Nobody is using it in Latin America. But I'm not teaching you Latin American Spanish. I'm, te I'm teaching you real Spanish. So you have to know it because you have you have to use it. There is a, there you, you will find yourself in a situation where you should use it, then you use it. Because you cannot use one personal pronoun for another one. It's completely incorrect to do that. And it can be informal or exaggeration. Okay. The other one, which is a start, that one is only used as independent, not as auxiliary verb. That needs to be clear. Okay. You only use it as independent, not as auxiliary. Yo estoy. I am. Tu estás. You are. Él, ella está. He, she is. Nosotros estamos. We are. 
Vosotros estáis. You are. Ellos están. They are. Very important. Again, vosotros estáis, the second plural, in Latin America, they tend to delete that. They, nobody is using it in America. But make sure you use it when you speak. I'm going to teach you when to use it. You need to speak You need to speak Spanish properly. If you're learning with Libizy, I'm teaching you the right thing. And you have to use it. Okay? Okay. Now, we've, we've done with conjugation. So, it's time for use now. Use is a bit tricky when it comes to those verbs. It is very important to know how to use them because if you don't use them properly, you might get in trouble. <laughs> yes, you might get in trouble. We use them for condition to describe something. When you're describing something, you can either use ser or estar. But depending on which one you use, you're talking about something temporary or something permanent or something that would last a bit longer. That's why we need to be very careful because you may think you, you may think you're saying something, meanwhile you're saying something completely different from what you intended to say. To use those verbs, it's going to be the same in English. The same rule, the same pattern. It's going to be article, substantive, plus to be, plus adjective. When we go to the Spanish, it's the same thing. Artículo, sustantivo, the verbs ser and or estar, and adjective at the end. It's just the same way in, in English. All you need to do, you just translate your sentence word by word, and then you put it there. But when it comes to verb choice, that is the tricky way, the most important thing you need to keep in mind. Let's say here we have, estás listo. Estás listo means I was doing something, but I'm done doing what, what I was doing. I'm ready to move out, to go. But ser listo, when I say, eres listo, it means you are smart. Or something might be in a negative way, like you tricky. Okay? Like you always cutting, cutting corners. You're always trying to find a way to trick people. Because you're very smart. I mean, if you're talking to somebody, you say like, you wanted to say, estás listo? And you say, eres listo? You're saying something completely different. And it might be offensive depending on the situation. So keep in mind, be very careful when you use those two verbs. But no need to worry. Libris is going to teach you which one to use in every single situation. So you can't go wrong, okay? Today, we're just going to focus more on one verb, which is estar. Estar is used to talk about something That is temporary. It's, this is, I mean, something that, that was not there before. It is there now, but it may not be there tomorrow. So that's something that is, that is changing at times or every second, every minute, but it is changing. That's how we use, that's why we use a start. Let's say the chair is broken. Just translate word by word and put it there. That's it. The es la chair silla es está broken rota. You will know how when to say roto or rota. I'm going to further one. I'm going to teach you how to, to identify feminine or masculine in Spanish words. So, this is going to be, la silla está rota. You just translate word by word, you put it there, that's it. La silla está rota. 
the chair is broken now, but I might fix it tomorrow. It was not broken before. You understand that? that for something that is temporary, it's not there forever. The man is sick. Same thing. The man was not sick his whole life. He's sick now. But if he goes to the hospital, he might find some pill, medication, or even surgery, and he, from, he can get healed or be healed from that disease. So that what we use now, we, we have to use estar. El hombre está enfermo. The man is sick. El hombre está enfermo. Be mindful of that accent on top of A. It is very important. You don't want to take it off. Okay? Pay attention to it. Keep it there. Further on, I'm going to explain you why it is there. And you will understand why it is there. The floor is wet. The floor is wet. Same thing is going to happen here. The floor is not always wet. Okay? Depending on the state. If you are in Seattle, it's always raining. But it's not... Not ever, not not always, but very often. So the floor is not always wet. Is is not was not wet before. Now it's wet, but tomorrow it may not be wet. El piso está mojado. El piso está mojado. Okay, don't worry. I'll teach you when when to say o o e at the end. O is for masculine. A is for feminine. But you will know that. Don't worry. Everything's going to be easy for you. Keep watching with us and then you will learn everything so easily. The dog is hungry. The dog is hungry. A dog cannot be hungry all the time. Okay? The dog is hungry now and if I feed him, then no more hunger. Right? That's why we say, El perro está hambriento. El perro está hambriento. A dog is hungry. It is something temporary, not for a long time, not forever. The street is crowded. The street is crowded. Now let's take a look at the, the pattern. It's just the same. The same way. In English, you just translate word by word, then you place them just the way they are. Then, this is going to be, La calle está congestionada. La calle está congestionada. La calle, the street is crowded now, but probably in a few hours, it's not going to be crowded. Or even in the night, it's not going to be crowded. Depending on depending the time of, of, of the day. Pretty easy, right? For something that is now going on, but it's not going to stay forever, right? Okay. Now we have another sentence. The battery is dead. The battery is dead. So the battery is dead now, but if I charge it, it's not going to be dead. So I'm going to say, La batería está descargada. La batería está descargada. La batería está descargada. It's pretty simple. That's all for today. It's pretty easy. Now you can make your own sentence, put anything you want there, and build your own sentence. Make sure you choose something that's not there forever, that tends tend to go away, then you that's pretty easy. Like, I'm tired. I am bored. Anything like that. Choose any adjective you think that, that is easy to be changed. Then you just, you're ready. Let's go for our homework now. Easy homework. You just help me translate those sentences pretty easy. Let's say, oh, I just gave you like, oh man, I shouldn't have said that. The woman is tired. I didn't know if, it, if that thing were in my, in my, my homework. But anyway, you got it. That was your luck. The woman is tired. Five seconds to translate that. La mujer está cansada. That's correct. La mujer está cansada. The woman is 
tired. She's tired now, but this morning she wasn't tired. She had a lot of energy. She was talking a lot, right? And probably tomorrow she's going to have a lot of energy, a lot, a lot more energy. The cup is clean. The cup is clean. Cup is, is vaso, clean is limpio. Five seconds. Great. If you tell me, el vaso está limpio, that's perfect. That's correct. Because it is clean now, but when I put some coffee, some tea, so it's no longer clean. And it's not going to stay unclean. When I clean it again, I do the, I do, I do, I put it in the washer and, and the, in the dishwasher, so it's going to be clean again. Great. The food is ready. Hmm, be careful. I've just used that, that adjective to explain the main difference. So be careful there. 10 seconds. Food is comida. Yes. If you said la comida está lista, that's the correct answer. La comida está lista. Don't worry if you still don't know whether you should say listo or lista. Don't worry. You will understand that very easily. Be patient. I'm going to teach you everything. The room is empty. The room is empty. Don't worry if you have to finish with O or, or A. I don't care about that. I just care about how you place the words, how you translate them. That's 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 more than enough for me. Okay. Empties vacío. If you said la sala está vacía. La sala está vacía. La sala está vacía. That's the correct answer. Then if you say the teacher is junk. <laughs> Interesting. Junk is borracho. Borracho. Teacher is professor. 10 seconds. Very interesting. If you said, el profesor está borracho. El profesor está borracho. He's junk now, but doesn't mean he'll be junk for the rest of his life. You know, by tomorrow morning, he'll, he should be fine. Okay. The car is broken. The car is broken. The car is broken. You have 10 seconds. Car is carro, broken, roto. Good job. If ever you said, el carro está dañado o el carro está roto, no problem at all. It's all good. That's all for today. So you score. How much do you think you scored? 100%? That's perfect. Amazing. Okay. That's all, that was all for today. You see, you see how easy it is? That's exactly how fun learning Spanish can be. If you learn, if you keep learning with Spanish made simple, we make it so simple, so easy. You don't have to think about it. So keep watching. Subscribe, share, and we're coming very soon with the fourth lesson. Take care and see you soon. Hasta luego.